When the Galaxy S9 launched a little while back, Samsung made a big deal out of the fact that the camera can swap between an industry first f1.5 and f2.4. Usually every brand launching a phone talks about how wide their aperture is. Usually every camera review you hear us talking about how the wider aperture lets more light in and makes for a better shooting experience. So while f1.5 is great, what does the narrower f2.4 do? Is it even needed? What's all the hoopla about? Well, I'm Ash here from C4E Tech and that's exactly what we aim to find out in today's video. But before we get to that, here's a card to our latest giveaway. I'll also leave a link in the description below. And while you're down there, don't forget to hit that bell icon and turn on notifications so that you don't miss out on any of our content. So let's first start with the theory. The F number is a fraction, so F1.5 is actually F by 1.5. And that's bigger than F2.4 or F by 2.4. The bigger or wider the aperture, more the light that enters the sensor and thus better the image quality. Now this means under low light, we don't really have a comparison. F1.5 just flat out wins. Look at this shot. We know that the wider aperture is gonna do well. The car's number plate, the leaves behind the car, the trees to the side, and even the night sky, it's all that much better when shot with f1.5. Now here's another example showing the same. Kudos to Samsung for bringing an industry first f1.5 to the S9 and S9 Plus. Anyway, I decided not to delve on the low light aspect of things any further and decided to go out at 12 noon, the sun right above my head, a super bright sunny day here in Chennai to see what kind of difference this made under well lit conditions. So I shot this with the pro mode on, left everything else on auto and just swapped the aperture. So to start with our regular spot where we test bokeh. Here is f1.5, now f2.4. I'm sure the first thing you noticed is the difference in the background blur here. There's no difference in sharpness in the shot. Here's another macro shot. F1.5 F2.4 Again, all we notice are the differences in bokeh and that's tremendous. With F1.5, the background blur is really strong, but sharpness or detail-wise, we don't have any differences. In this shot, one interesting thing to note is the area and focus. F2.4 has a larger area and focus surrounding the flower than compared to F1.5, and this at times is useful. To demonstrate that, we decided to shoot the Chevrolet logo on this car. Another common shot that I've used while texting cameras, F1.5, F2.4. So here, yes, the bokeh is different, but it is worth noting that in a scenario like this, you do find the f2.4 aperture helpful. With f1.5, it's just the center part of the logo that's in focus, whereas with f2.4, the image looks better. You need a larger area there to remain in focus, and that's where it actually helps. This is especially noticeable when you shoot macro shots like these. Additionally, this is something worth keeping in mind when you're shooting videos of moving objects like a kid playing or a dog chasing after something or something like that. Anyway, now that we're done with the macro part of this video, I decided to test out wide, wide shots. Here, in theory, a lens with a wider aperture should have softer corners, but with smaller sensor cameras, the result isn't really noticeable. Not as much as it would be with, say, a DSLR. Like in this instance, look at all four corners, the wheels, the tree, the building, and the scooty. There is not a lot different between both images. The 2.4 is a tiny, tiny amount sharper, but it's almost negligible. Here's another example. I framed this shot with a banner to the left just to check for sharpness, differences, and again, it's not really noticeable. Now a real easy way to test these out is to shoot something without background blur. So I came back indoors and shot this poster we have. Again, as you can see, the corner softening is almost non-existent. So guys, overall, F1.5 is a wonderful thing that Samsung has done with the Galaxy S9. Being able to switch to F2.4 is just icing on the cake. It does help under certain situations, but it's nothing drastic. In certain instances, like in case you have a shot where you want to keep a larger subject area in focus, it definitely is useful. But outside of instances like these, it doesn't do a lot. It definitely is cool. It's awesome to see technology advance this way, but as of today, 
given the sensor size that we are dealing with on smartphones, it's not a huge deal breaker. Basically, I'm glad that Samsung's included it, but that isn't the reason why I'd buy a S9 over something else. So that's it for this video. At the launch announcement, I was kind of very intrigued by this variable aperture, so I decided to dig a little deeper and thought you'd find these results interesting too. If you did, then go ahead, give this video a thumbs up, subscribe and turn on notifications. If you have a different take on this, if you feel I missed out on something, let me know in the description below. And that's it, thanks a lot for watching. Till next time, this here is Ash, you've been watching C4 Retech, and I'm signing off for now. You guys have a great day, bye-bye.